Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and I found a really fun filter on Instagram that says which sad slash hot girl book are you and this was created by daisyb.jpg and a lot of my friends use this filter on their Instagram stories to figure out what hot girl book they are so I thought it would be really fun to use this filter in this video to let it decide the next book that I should read. A sad slash hot girl book is something that is coined from book talk. These books primarily deal with women protagonists as they deal with adulthood, romance, depression, anxiety, family, grief, etc. It's just a type of vibe. I'm sure if you were to search up hot girl books on TikTok, you would find a lot of recommendations that a lot of people consider to be hot girl books. So I thought it would be really fun to try out this filter in this video and let it pick out my next read. The only thing that I want to say is I have two rules. One, it has to interest me. If it picks out a book that I'm not interested in, I'm not going to read it. I will use the filter again to find another read. Two, I want it to be accessible to me, so if my library has it, I will read it. So let's try out this filter and let it pick out my next read for this reading vlog. All right, I have it on my phone and I'm going to click tap to start to let it pick out my next hot girl read. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I picked out Rebecca. That could be considered a hot girl book. I wouldn't necessarily consider it a hot girl book, but I have read Rebecca, so I'm going to have to do this filter all over again. Round two. Let's hope it doesn't pick out another book that I've already read. I'm so scared. Okay, so the book that it picked out is You Exist Too Much. I've never heard of this book before. I'm going to read the synopsis. If it interests me, that's going to be the next book that I'm going to read. So You Exist Too Much is a provocative and seductive debut of desire and doubleness that follows the life of a young Palestinian-American woman caught between cultural, religious, and sexual identities as she endeavors to lead an authentic life. This sounds right up my alley, which is amazing because on the second try, I found a book that interests me and I just looked at my Libby app and it is available to borrow. So I think I'm going to borrow this one because I want to read more Palestinian fiction and it's also under 300 pages. So I think this is the perfect amalgamation of three of the things that I have been looking for. A book that interests me, a book that is available from my library, and also a book that's not too long. I think this is going to be the perfect hot girl book. I've noticed that hot girl books generally are literary fictions and I love the exploration of womanhood and how there are so many different ways you can live a life as a woman and the different challenges that you have to go through and I'm very excited to see this from the perspective of a Palestinian because her perspective is going to be vastly different from my own. So I think not only is it going to be entertaining to read, but it's also going to be very educational and I think it's going to be an eye-opening read. And I'm really excited because I've never heard of this book before. So this filter opened my eyes to a new book that I would have never picked up and I'm very excited for it. So let me borrow it from my library before anyone else does. Let me add it to my Kindle and I cannot wait to start reading it today. Can we talk about how beautiful this cover is? I think one main factor of hot girl books is like a simplistic cover. It generally has the text take over the entire cover and it has a beautiful background. I've noticed that a lot for hot girl books in terms of like the books that I see considered hot girl books on book talk, but I think this cover is absolutely beautiful and I cannot wait to dive into this book now. I was just scrolling through the blurbs and one caught my eye and it said i rooted for her and hurt for her as she tried to find her way through one bad decision after another the main character whose name is never revealed stayed with me long after i closed the book as did her hope for yet another shot at love and that was by amory i think this is going to be a book that's going to stick with me and i've seen a couple of friends on goodreads have read it but i don't want to read their reviews i don't want my opinion to be swayed this is 264 pages on kindle and i think it's going to leave a very big lasting impression on me. I really hope it does.
so I was adding the book to my Goodreads as currently reading and I saw that the book was included on a list called She's Not Feeling Good At All. The description of the list says, list inspired by Jess Bergman's I'm Not Feeling Good At All piece where she discusses the perplexingly alienated women of recent American fiction. They tend to have boring jobs and offices, they aren't close to their family, or they have no living relatives. Although Bergman's piece focuses on fiction with American protagonists, this list isn't solely reserved for American fiction. I also noticed that the same user had another list called Sad, Strange, Miserable Women in Literary Fiction. So so this description said, The women populating these books are unhappy, disconnected, daydreamers, peculiar, lost, depressed, alienated, you get the gist. So basically, hot girl books are just books about women who are really going through it. They are dealing with mental health issues, they are dealing with their family, their career, and there are these perfectly imperfect characters that are raw and very relatable, and I feel like there's a big emergence in that in fiction where we are witnessing all these characters share their very messy lives and the bad decisions that they make and we follow along with their journey as they learn life lessons and they kind of overcome the dark state that they were at at the beginning of the book. So I think that's what You Exist Too Much is going to explore as well, but through the lens of a Palestinian woman who is also queer. And I think that that perspective is very important, so I'm excited to dive into it and explore this character's personality, the different things that she had to go through, and how she grows as a character from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. The first chapter of the book takes place in Bethlehem. The main character is with her mother and her uncle, and she has to change because her clothing is inappropriate because she is showing off her legs. So the uncle offers to change her outfit and the main character says, it occurred to me in that moment to question why, as a man, his bare legs were somehow less troubling than mine. It was a double standard, a shame I had simply accepted until then. In acquiring my gender, I had become offensive. We're already on page four and I'm already like, yes, exactly. wanted to give you a reading update because I am 120 pages in out of I think 260 pages for this book and I am really enjoying it. I love following the main character as she is falling in love with all these different people and who are only ever unattainable. So in the book and in the synopsis it says that the main character goes to this rehab facility called The Ledge. So it deals with a bunch of different addictions and the main character has a love addiction. So she is talking to the people who are also in this facility. They are getting to know one another but we're also flashing back to our past and to our past relationships or situationships because she's not necessarily in relationships with all these women that she's falling in love with but she does have this deep connection connection to them and she feels very strongly for them even though she knows she's not able to actually form a relationship with them. I really enjoy exploring this main character's obsession with other people and how this is a form of self-sabotage because it always ruins the relationships that she is currently in because she always seems to fall for someone she is unable to have. I think this is a very interesting topic and I'm excited to see what we're going to explore next in the book because we are exploring the main character's rocky relationship to her mother we are exploring the relationships that she becomes obsessed with and now we're also exploring her time at the ledge. So I'm keen to see what is going to happen next because I am just flying through this book. So I'm hoping to read this later today on my iPad and I'm just having a great time with it overall. But I do want to show you a couple of things that I got from the thrift store yesterday. My mom and I after work went to Goodwill like 20 minutes before it closed because we did not realize that it closed at like 6 p.m. and I found three really cool items that are perfect for spring and summer because I have a lot of winter clothes and I have a lot of sweaters but I don't have a lot of clothes that it's appropriate for summer because it gets 
really hot here and I need like skirts and tops for the summer because I always seem to grow out of that or the items become very worn and used because I use them over and over again in the summer. So I have three pieces of clothing from the thrift store that I want to show you. The first one is what I call a Fran Fine skirt. It is just a little plaid skirt that I have always wanted to wear but I've always felt too self-conscious for it because I feel like I don't have the hips for this type of clothing but I tried it on in Goodwill 20 minutes before the store closed and it fit like a glove. I really love it and I think it flatters my body and makes me feel a little bit more confident and it's finally letting me live my dream of dressing like Fran Fine from the nanny. Another skirt I found reminds me of Mrs. Maisel and it is this polka dot very flowy a-line skirt. It feels so vintage and beautiful and classic and I love the coloring because I don't tend to wear navy blue a lot and I don't tend to buy things that are polka dot too. But I think that I can pair this with a bunch of different outfits and I think that it is just so beautiful when I wear it and it makes me feel like I'm a old Hollywood queen. And the last thing that I got was a cropped white t-shirt that my mom found and I need these because I wear them so often in the summer and every other year they start to get really worn and kind of yellowish so I wanted to get a fresh t-shirt for this summer and it fits also like a glove. I was very lucky in finding all these items because I usually don't find a lot of items in other thrift stores but this one Goodwill that I always go to with my mom is like my lucky Goodwill where I always find a wonderful piece of clothing. So I'm glad that I was able to find these three items and I just feel very accomplished with those purchases. So now that I showed you my little thrift store haul, I'm going to go onto my front porch where I always read and I'm going to get back into You Exist Too Much. I finally finished You Exist Too Much and I had such a great time with it. So we follow our main character who is unnamed as she goes in and out of relationships and how those different relationships fall together and both fall apart through her own means. So in the beginning we follow our main character as she is self-sabotaging her relationships because once she gets into one she falls for another person who is unattainable and that is the reason why her relationship eventually falls apart. Then we follow her as she goes through therapy and she really betters herself and learns from her life lessons and throughout this whole entire story interspersed into her internal monologue we learn more about her Palestinian identity and her relationship to her mother and how that is a very rocky relationship because her mother is very strict and conservative and she doesn't support her daughter being queer and exploring that identity so I just thought this book was just a mixture of a ton of different topics that I was interested in I thought it was so well executed it was engaging at all points it didn't feel recycled or overdone because this does heavily follow our main character as she is falling in and out of relationships but I think it was just such an engaging read because I really love exploring women in fiction who don't have their lives together. I love when a main character has to either deal with her mental health, her family, her friendships, or her relationships in a way that is not so cookie cutter. It is messy, it is raw, it is real and I loved that and you exist too much and I feel like that's definitely what makes it a hot girl book. So I'm just so glad that I was able to pick this up and support a Palestinian author and I'm also really excited that I picked up a book that I would have never actually picked up beforehand because I did not know about this book and this filter actually introduced me to it. So I think it was a job well done in choosing this filter and doing this reading vlog and let me know if you want me to do any other reading vlog challenges in the future. I thought this was really fun and different and I definitely want to do more things like this in the future where I just focus on one book because reading like five books in one vlog is just like too much for me as someone who does not read fast. So I think like this challenge type of aspect of this reading vlog is very fun. So let me know if you have any ideas in the future and I would love to take them into account. If you want to follow me anywhere else on social media, all my links will be down below. And I also just recently created a Discord, which is really fun. We talk about movies, books, TV shows, sewing, plant care, 
it is such a great community over there so i'll be sure to link that as well in the description of this video thank you so much for watching and if you've made it this far in this video leave a white heart emoji so we can see who stays for the longest and if you do thank you so much for your support and i will see you in another video very soon bye